I'll teach you something you won't forget. once again this time after a slightly longer pause as you might have noticed if you watched my past videos but anyways uh, we are here in some kind of a hallway as you see with a fence so we don't fall over the edge and a beautiful sunrise over there and some natural lighting from the ceiling and a chest at the end of the hallway but this whole setup looks kind of suspicious. I mean, let's be honest, even the video title says it's a trap, so who are we kidding here? But I don't see how this should work. There are no pressure plates, no trip wires. I can't hear any pistons or any items being picked up from pressure plates. So I don't really know what this is all about. I mean, is this a trap chest? It doesn't seem to be. We can actually break up the ground to see if there's anything below there that usually reveals traps but no there's nothing there so it actually seems to be safe to open the chest I will just take the risk nothing happens okay so what do we have in here a wooden sword okay I have to be honest that's kinda disappointing all this way just for a wooden sword all this effort Okay, there was not really that much of an effort, but still, that's kind of disappointing. So, whatever, what is this about? I don't know. Um, but, whatever, whoa, why are there zombies there? I did not activate anything. Whoa, I am so gonna die. I am so gonna die. I don't want to. No, leave me alone. I died. Damn it. So, how exactly does this work? Well, I can honestly tell you, this chest has really nothing to do with it. You can destroy it, nothing happens. There is actually really no redstone here. The only redstone in this area is this redstone down there, which is just there to activate those dispensers. And those are just responsible to spawn the zombies. You do not need them. You can do whatever kind of trap you want. It can be really anything. The mechanism that I use is just there to uh, detect where the player is. And it does not need any redstone near the player. It can detect a player in empty space basically um, all you need is a specific mechanism which I'm going to explain and show in a second I will just show you that this actually works you need to be a, at least in easy mode otherwise it does not work and the mere fact that I walked in here uh, made some redstone light up and if I go out of this area it will turn off and therefore repower those dispensers I'm going to just show you that if I walk out here Okay, there it was. Um, it just activates those dispensers, and that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to go into peaceful, and then it is again to get rid of the zombies. Uh, like this. And now I will detach this redstone so that the zombies do not spawn. So you can see this messily wired stuff down here is really just there to activate the dispensers and that's all the redstone that is around this uh, hallway but you can al already see this lamp is going on and off this lamp is just here to show you whether or not the mechanism is active or inactive or more precise if the uh, mechanism um, triggers no, not triggers uh, targets the player so if it, it manages to see whether the player is in a certain radius and the radius actually goes up until here. From all the way back there, the end of there, this the bulge there of stuff, that's the mechanism, or, or at least part of it is. And uh, it has a radius of pretty much exactly 128 blocks. And it goes up to this point, actually pretty much exactly to the edge of this stair. If I go right to the edge of the stair, it is still triggering me. And if I walk past that, right here, it will turn off the redstone right there and if I go just slightly over the edge it will uh, find me again so that's very precise actually it's kind of a big radius Whoop. and if you are very very near to the edge it might have some bugs but as soon as you walk a little bit further it will constantly uh, find you um, 
So how exactly does this work? Well, here we have just a really, just simply a null wire with instant repeaters. Those are instant repeaters that I have had to redesign to fit in another uh, contraption that I'm going to show in a later video, which is actually a fully functioning hangman mini game that I made. And uh, yeah, so this is really all that it is about. You do not need to um, think about this part right here. That is really just um, a little safety mechanism that I put in there just for fun. You don't really need it, but I uh, thought it might help someone if they want to build this and they have this problem that I had, but you can much more easily get rid of that problem. But anyways, um, what happens here is very simple. We have a hopper clock. Uh, wait a second. Like this, so now we do not get disrupted by this guy over there. Um, so we have a hopper clock here, and if this is running, it activates this dis uh, dispenser over here, which has zombie spawn eggs in it, and this piston over there, which pushes the zombies onto this pressure plate. I can really quickly show you if you do this once, it's going to push, uh, not push the zombie in, but on the next time the zombie is pushed into the lava. And then, um, um, I'm sorry, uh, the zombie is being spawned here and the zombie that has been spawned before that is going to be pushed in the lava. And then the, la uh, the next zombie is going to be pushed in and the new one is going to be spawned and so on and so on. So I actually should put a half slab in there instead of a block. So what happens is the zombie gets pushed onto the pressure plate and it uh, suffers from the lava. and as long as it, is, as it still lives, it will power the redstone line. And why is there again a villager in here? Anyways, um, well, as long as the zombie lives, it will power the redstone line. And if it dies and no other zombie has been pushed in in the meantime, the redstone will turn off. Now, since the clock is constantly running, there are always zombies on the pressure plate. Now, in order for that to turn off, what you need to do is you need to go 128 blocks away from the dispenser because, or to be more precise, 128 blocks away from the uh, place in front of the piston uh, and the dispenser right here. Um, if you go 128 blocks away from that, no mobs will be able to spawn there anymore because the maximum radius around a player where uh, mobs can spawn is pretty much 128 blocks. So if you go out of that radius, the zombies cannot spawn anymore and they cannot be spawned by this dispenser anymore and therefore there are no uh, zombies on this pressure plate. But the redstone is being loaded in a much higher radius around the player than 128 blocks. And therefore the pressure plate is still loaded, but there are no zombies anymore. And so the pressure plate says there is no zombies there anymore, so the redstone turns off. And that's basically how it works. So very simple. I can just um, make a little uh, explanation with using blocks to make it even more clear. Let's use uh, hoppers, pressure plates, and so on. So you have your pressure plate here with a zombie symbolized by this hopper. And uh, the zombies get spawned um, all the time. And you have redstone going back here. And as soon as you leave a radius of 128 blocks around the hopper, or the zombie, so to speak, um, the, z the uh, zombie will not spawn anymore, but the pressure plate will still be active. So it will detect whether or not there is a zombie there or not. And therefore it can detect whether or not the player is in within a radius of 128 blocks around the, play uh, around the zombie spawner or not. And that's basically how this works. And it is... Uh, very simple, very effective. It is just a problem with the size. Um, there is no way to make the radius smaller as far as I know. And I think every mob has this radius of 128 blocks to despawn. I'm not sure about that, but it seems uh, this way because I have tried this with different mobs, uh, zombies and creepers and so on, and they all have a radius of 128 blocks. But um, well, if you know any way to make this smaller, then please uh, tell me. 
would be interesting. But what you can do is you can actually make this specific for one block. And that is to have uh, the location that you want to have right here. And you can have a spawner in this direction, 128 blocks. And in this direction, 128 blocks. And also in this direction and in this direction. That will, uh, if you go 128 blocks away in every direction, make a spawner there and connect this with the redstone, you will actually have basically a test for mechanism that will see if a player is exactly in these coordinates. Now, um, of course, if you want to have this for one block exactly in three-dimensional space, you would have to make six of those. What you also can do instead of um, instead of making uh, four directions, you can, al can also make one over here, one, uh, one spawner here, and then another spawner right next to it that is instead of there, one block further towards the location. So you have one uh, radius that ends here and one a radius that ends here and you can say okay it needs to be in both radius and if you make this in this direction and you make it in the other direction as well then you have uh, a one uh, block specific test for mechanism. So that's how you can do that and I will actually show this on another server where I have already built this and which is actually the first place where I have ever built this mechanism at all, where I found it. Uh, not found in, in the means of um, actually someone else built it and I found it there, but where I actually invented it. That's probably a better way to say it. So yeah, we'll see you on that server. And here we are. This is the server that I basically invented this on. And we've actually been here, I think I've made a video on here. This is the ORE server, Open Reds and Engineers. And yeah, this is actually the first ver version that I've built with a little bit of an extension. So now what we can do here is we can see where exactly the player is, or approximately exactly. Uh, it detects whether the player is on the red side here, the green side here, or in the middle, on the yellow si side, the yellow block, whatever. And if you uh, go to the right, it will actually activate the right lamp. If you go on the left side, it will activate the left lamp. And this is actually just like the other mechanism, it's uh, half block specific. So if I uh, mark this half of the block, if I go onto the left side of the block, the left uh, lamp is activated. If I go onto the right half of the green block, then the middle is activated. So the, uh, the mark is actually right here. The left half of the uh, red block, the entire yellow block, and the right half of the green block, that's the middle lamp. If I go past that, it goes onto the left side. If I go onto the right half of the green block, it should activate the middle right there. Same with red. Left half is middle. Right half is the right hand side. So that is a little bit of a problem that it's half block specific, but that does not really matter. You can still make it one block exactly, but it's going to be uh, on the edge of four blocks if I grab just this you can see if I place stairs down and this is basically the uh, uh, the you can see how you can make it one block specific it's going to be the four corners of four blocks that's how it would be one block specific it's not going to be specific for the block in a specific coordinate but the area of one block at the edge of four basically so we can turn this off here um, and this is actually a little bit broken because it usually has, f whoa, why is the redstone missing here? It usually has four spawners, but this spawner over here was in this plot and the plot owner was actually perfectly fine with that, but the plot owner resetted his plot and as you can see on the sign, uh, signs, it uh, actually broke my mechanism and I can rebuild it if I want to, but I <laughs> was just too lazy to do that. But yeah, so I used four spawners here, one is back there, that one is still intact. Um, but I blocked both of them with this redstone block here because only one of them does not really serve a purpose. I can show you what happens if you remove that and replace this redstone. Um, what you can do is if you turn this on and the one back there gets loaded, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, it gets loaded if you go out, it should turn off. Okay, right there, the same here. If you get into the area, it will turn on both 
and they turn off if you leave. Okay, so what happens here is if you go in here, it turns on or off? It turns off. Okay, if you go out of here, it turns on. So it detects whether you are in this area or in this area or only in this area. One of those. If you go over there, it turns off. And the same uh, was actually with the spawner back there. So you actually had a mechanism that detected if you were somewhere in uh, in here in this this part over here or in this part over here or in this part over here and you can actually make it like this that it looked with o like only one uh, of those and you could make it look at I as if uh, you were uh, it, it, you can actually make it to, into a mechanism which detects if you are in this area exactly and only in this area and everywhere else it would turn off like this hello okay so this has okay now it works so if you are down here it would turn off or the same for you back here and so on and so on so you can make a one block specific mechanism you just need a hell load of space and um yeah, so that's what you can do. But anyways, uh, I will just show you a little bit of a difference between the new design and the old design. Um, this is the old design. It still works. I just can't get it to work anymore in my single player world. Um, which is weird. I don't know why, but it just doesn't work anymore. Or, or, or I'm just too dumb to get it to work. I don't know. Um, so it this one works with trip wires instead of a, um, instead of trip. Uh, Tripwires instead of tripwires. Okay, okay. Um, I'm getting tired. Um, tripwires instead of pressure plates. That is, that's it. That's the word. Um, so the mobs, which in this case are creepers, um, get spawned and fall down into the lava and activate the the tripwire. And the fact that I use creepers here is actually the reason why I need the safety mechanism in the other one and not here, because in the uh, single player world I'm using uh, zombies and here I'm using creepers and I'm going to explain you in the next second of this video why I need the safety mechanism there um, and I'm just going to go back to the single player world and explain that to you so we'll see you there so now I'm going to attempt to explain this safety mechanism um, which you actually do not need really but uh, I just thought it could be interesting to explain this uh, anyways, what I did here is I ha made the mistake to use zombie spawn eggs and the reason why this is a mistake is I'll just try to quickly build this up down here. If you use zombie spawn eggs, it has a uh, certain uh, possibility to spawn uh, zombie babies. If you do like this, okay, so now we have the lava on the pressure plate. And if you actually do this, wait a second, I will just use the command to spawn the zombie baby. It's going to be uh, one, two, three blocks below. So I'm going to, uh, I hope I remember the correct command. It's, oh, okay, I, okay, of course, on the server I deactivated the chat, so I need to get it back this should be summon zombie and then uh, the coordinates are minus three and then uh, um, it should be I hope it's correct is baby one Ooh, not like this like this is baby one if I do that that did not work. Okay, where is the where is the mistake? Okay, I did not make a capital B is baby one. And now you can see it dis does not get burned. If I use half slap here so that it cannot es escape, you will see what actually happens there. Like this. It burns or it it seems like it burns. I'm not sure if it actually burns. It might be because of the sunlight or it might be a graphic glitch or maybe it is like with the top of the head inside the lava but not suffering any damage. I don't know. But it does not burn to death. And that is a problem 
um, but actually not that much of a problem as I um, found out. Uh, it actually still disappears in the right uh, radius and so on and so on. So it's not really that much of a problem, but I still built this mechanism just to make sure that everything works fine. So this is the safety mechanism here, and it works by spawning villagers into this area here. And baby zombies can walk underneath these blocks towards the villager, and if they walk over this pressure plate, since they are fast, they walk into this area and fall down into the lava with the villager. So I'll just show you that in a second. I will just spawn a village, uh, zombie baby here. And you can see it walks toward the villager, and uh, both of them fall into the lava and a new villager gets spawned. You do not necessarily need that, as I said before, because the zombie baby despawns anyway if you are uh, outside of, a, uh, of this radius of 128 blocks. But I just built this just in case. I don't know. Um, you do not need that, but if you want to build it, fine. Um, anyways. So you should probably anyways use creeper or skeleton, skeleton um, spawn eggs because I don't think they can produce zombie, uh, sorry, not zombie, uh, mob babies. Um, but villagers and uh, zombies certainly can, so if you have that it might lead to a problem, I don't know. So that's basically about it. Uh, I've told you anything about this or everything about this that I know. Um, I will try some stuff out with this uh, and let's see if this can actually lead to something uh, awesome. But um, until then, uh, I would say if you have any questions left, just write in my comment section or write a comment to the uh, topics in the Redstone forums that I'm going to post this at. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video and see you soon.